Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you've recently purchased On One Photo Raw or if you've downloaded their fully working free trial, you've probably come to realize that it's a very comprehensive application. And what I mean by that is there's a lot in it. And if you're new to On One, that can be a bit intimidating. So, in today's video, I want to talk about some of the automatic and AI features that are in On One that will help someone who is new to the application get a good edit. And along the way, using these automatic and AI features will help you learn how things are done in On One so that you can develop your own workflow. Before I do, though, I do have a favor to ask if you value my content please subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. All right, this is a totally unedited raw file. And if you're new to On One, you're probably going to go to Tone and Color and you're going to look at all these sliders and profile options and things and you're going to think to yourself, like, where do I begin? What slider do I move first? Well, if you're totally new to On One, what I recommend you do is just click Brilliance AI. When you click Brilliance AI, it will do an edit on your image. And if you go to Tone and Color, you'll notice that it moved the sliders as needed for this image. And what it also did, it did local adjustments as well. And what I mean by that, it built masks and did edits to various elements in the scene. For this specific image, it built a mask for the sky and it did an edit just for the sky and it built a mask for the flora, and it did just an edit for the flora. And you may be thinking, well, that's all fine and good, but I don't like what it did. Well, if that's the case, what you can do is it has an amount slider here. And you could take this amount slider and just pull it down or push it up to adjust it that way. Also, you'll notice there's a fine tune like drop down here, open that up, and you could adjust the tone independent of the color. So you could adjust those. Also, as I mentioned, it created masks and did local adjustments. If you want to do something with those, meaning you want the flora boosted more or you want it like toned down more, you could do that. If you want the sky boosted more or toned down more, you could do that as well. So you could come in and fine tune what Brilliance AI did. Now, for me, I think it's like just too bright. So I would take the amounts down. And once I do that, then I could continue and do some more edits. And there's some more automatic or AI features in on one that will help me do edits. More specifically, I'm talking about a tool on the left-hand side. It's this little magic wand. It's called Super Select AI. If you turn this on, what it will allow you to do is once it looks at your image and it determines what elements are in the scene, it will allow you to select very various elements in the scene and do edits to those elements all by themselves. More specifically, you'll be able to put effects on them. So, for example, the sky. Once I have Super Select AI on, I could just hover over the sky and you can see we get this blue overlay. Then all I need to do is right click. I'll get this little menu and let's say I want to add dynamic contrast to the sky. And when I do, it will add dynamic contrast and it added this natural style. When you use effects, most of the effects will have these styles and they're pretty much presets for that specific effect. So I could click on this and see what it does. And if you want to get a before after, click this little radio button at the top. There's before and there's after. I could do surreal. I could do soft. I could go to the drop down. I think there's one more here, texture enhancer. So I could try these. I don't even have to move a slider. I could just try one of these styles and see if it works. I kind of like natural, but if you want to tweak it, you can. Uh, for the actual dynamic contrast, there's three sliders, small, medium, and large. I prefer to work these from the bottom up. I just think that's the way I get a better edit with them. Also, you could adjust tone as well. So if you want to open up shadows a little more or something like that, you could do that as well. So you could tweak things, but you'll notice that you're only affecting the sky because when I use Super Select AI, it automatically built this mask. And with the mask... It's only affecting 
the sky. Now, let's say I want to do something with that sculpture. It just isn't standing out far enough. I want it to make it more noticeable. So I am again going to use Super Select AI. And you'll notice when I hover over it, like it might get like the top and it might get part, maybe it's not getting the base, but I want to get the whole thing. Well, what I could do is I could actually just draw this rectangle over it and then it will select it and you can see that it selected the sculpture now what do i want to do well i'm going to go and right click on it and i am going to do the same um actual effect dynamic contrast so we're going to add dynamic contrast and here i'm going to go right to shadows and open those up to make it brighter and then i'm going to add some small texture to it as well so it's just making it stand out a little more now i want to do something with the grass that's kind of in the foreground and midground so i will still have the super select ai selected i'm going to hover over that it's just selecting that grass i don't want to do the the taller grass in the midground nor do i want to do the trees so i'll go over this i'll right click and here i want to go up and do a color adjustment with the color adjustment i want to go to the individual color swatches and I want to go to yellow and with yellow I just want to go down and make it brighter and then I'm going to go to green and with green I'm going to make it darker and this is typically what I do I'll go back to yellow and maybe I'll make that even a little brighter what I do why I do this is when you have this kind of uniform green I like to give it some tonal variance. So I'm making the brighter greens a little brighter and the darker greens a little darker. So it just adds some tonal variance. So there's before, very much uniformly green, and there's after. It's a small, subtle adjustment, but I like it. And really, I'm almost done. What I like to do, though, is finish off uh, my edits using a dark vignette. So I'm going to add one more filter, and I'm going to go to Vignette. And I'll go to, let's say, Big Softy. So I have a style I could choose from. That's a little heavy, so I'll just go to Opacity and pull that down. Just as simple as that. And by the way, if you don't see the slider, just click on the word Opacity and you'll get the slider. So I'll just tone that down. Now there's some more automatic features. Let's go to a different image for that. Uh, this image here, this is, again is a non or an unedited RAW file. Um, I don't like the way I framed it. I really have too much sky and maybe I have the barn too far to the right. So I need to crop it. So I could get the crop tool over here at the far left. And if you're not sure of exactly how to crop it, you could go up here and click AI and it will use AI to crop your image. So I'll do that. And not only will it crop the image, but it will straighten it as well. It was a little bit crooked. So that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go over here and click the little blue check mark to commit to that crop. Then I am again going to click on Brilliance AI to get a automatic edit. Now again, Brilliance AI adjusted tone and color and it added some local masks, one for the flora and one for the sky, you could see. Now what masks it adds, it doesn't just always add a flora and a sky one. If there's no sky in your image, it won't add the sky one, but it will add other types of masks as well. So if you have water in the scene, it may add a mask for the water. If you have natural ground, like a road, it may add a mask for the road as well. So it's not limited to just flora and sky. It just the first two images I did, that's all that was in here. Uh, so I kind of like the Brilliance AI, but I think I'll just tone it down a little bit. There's already a lot of uh, tonal variance in the grass, so I don't really need to do that little trick that I did on the other one. But I do want to use a Super Select AI on the sky again, so I'll turn it on. It has to look at the scene and determine what elements are here. So I like that. I'm going to right-click on the sky. And again, I always use Dynamic Contrast. It's my favorite effect in on one so you come through and click through sometimes that blue overlay will stay there for a sec but you can see there's surreal soft texture enhancer and then natural i don't want it to be overbearing so there's before and there's after just want it subtle to bring out a little more detail in the sky i think i want to add another thing to the sky though so we're going to hover the sky again right click and then we're going to go to color adjustment and with this one, I'm going to go to blue and I'm going to go to brightness and pull brightness down. Now we got to kind of get there. There we go. 
pull brightness down. So make the blue parts a little darker. And then I'll finish it off as I typically do by adding the vignette. So I'll go to add filter and I'll go to vignette. This time, let's try the strong. We still have super select AI on. We'll just come and click the little hand tool over to get rid of that. And I'll click on opacity. So I get that opacity slider and I'll just back it off a little bit. And that's that. So that's how fast I was able to do an edit using just about all automatic features in on one. Uh, let's try another one. I have this image here. This again is an unedited raw file. Again, I don't like the crop. So I'm going to go to the crop to it. Also looks like it might be slightly crooked. So we'll go and click the AI feature here. Now, sometimes it doesn't crop the way you want it to. Like I really do want the sculpture of the little boy right in the middle. So I am going to then just modify it by pulling it more towards the middle like that. And then I'll commit to the crop by hitting the check mark. So we'll go back to the develop tab. I'll turn on Brilliance AI. Let it do its thing. And, and wow, it looks a little bit overbearing, maybe a little bit too strong. So I'll pull the full amount down a little bit. But you'll notice if I go to the local tab, um, it did one for the flora, a mask for the flora, one for the sky, and one for the water. So it has three masks for this one. So if I want to go to, let's say, the mask for the sky, and I just want to modify it here, I can, like I could bring, make the sky a little darker. See how it's only affecting the sky? That looks actually pretty good. So I'll just uh, finish it off by going to effects and adding my vignette that I typically do. And for this one, let's try that subtle one. That looks pretty good. Look how fast was that. I went from this to that, and this to that. All right, let's do one more, and then we're going to wrap it up for the uh, day here. So we'll go to this image here. Again, this is an unedited RAW file. We'll go to the Develop tab. We'll click on Brilliance AI, and eh, it's okay. It looks kind of drab. Maybe I'll try to tweak up. No, I didn't like what they did there. So we'll put, if you want to reset a slider, just double click on the name of the slider and it'll reset it. Um, I think overall it's okay, but it, it needs a lot more work. Don't you agree? So what we'll do is we'll get super select AI again and we'll see if we could get this grass here. So once it finds out what's here and you could click more than once, so left click, and then I could come over here and like get more of the grass in. If I, if I want to go through the trouble of doing that, but I think this is all right. But just to let you know that you could add to it by just clicking on multiple times to get more added to it. And then what we're going to do here then is we'll right click and we're going to go up to color adjustment. And with color adjustment, we are again going to go to the yellow swatch and we're going to make it brighter. We're going to go to the green swatch, swatch and make it darker. All right, um, I really don't like the sky, just doesn't look right to me. So with Super Select AI, I'll hover over that, right click, and here we're going to go to a tone enhancer. And overall, it just looks a little bit too dark and weird looking. So I'm going to see what contrast does. Maybe we'll bring, make it a little brighter, more contrast. Go to whites and blacks. Then we'll go down here. Oops, don't want to do that. There we go. Scroll down, and I'm going to add some clarity and some detail. And that looks all right. Now, what about those trees in the middle? Why don't I try to do something with those? Now, I'm getting little patches of them, so I could just left-click there, left-click there. Just keep clicking and adding to it. I could also try to, like, paint over like that add to it that looks pretty good maybe we we'll get this tree back here as well so i like what i did there as far as the selection now I'll right click on it and again we're going to go up to the color adjustment and here we'll again go to yellow and we're going to make just the brighter greens a little brighter and maybe saturate those a little more we'll go to the green and i want to even make the green a little brighter too just to bring out more of the tonal variance in those trees and now i'll just finish it up again by going to add filter we'll go to the vignette 
oops, not vintage, didn't want that. If you make a mistake like I just did, you could delete the, um, the filter that you just added. Just click on the little X right here to remove it and just remove it. So then we'll go to add filter again, and then we'll go to vignette. And this one, I think a subtle one too. And I like subtle just like that. So here is a before and there's an after. There's before, there's an after. Maybe if you don't like the crop, you could do crop it now. Go to the crop tool, try that AI tool. See what that does. I still think it has it too far that way. So let's move it this way. I think it tightens it up a little bit. Also seems a little bit crooked. Just straighten it a little bit like that. And then click the blue check mark. There we go. I think that looks a little better. So there's before and there's after. But hopefully you understand how using these AI features not only gets you a good edit relatively quickly, particularly if you're not familiar with how to use on one, but it also will help you kind of discover how things are done in on one, meaning you could do global adjustments under the develop tab, mainly with tone and color. Always, I always forget, but you should apply lens corrections on your images. I did forget on all four of these, but you could come back in and do it after the fact. Also, after then you're done with these global adjustments that you would do under the develop tab, uh, often you'll want to do local adjustments uh, to various elements in the scene, and you could use um, different tools to do that, like, like I use Brilliance AI. But more often, you jump right over to effects, and you'd use Super Select AI is the easiest way to select various elements in the scene to add effects to those elements. So that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.